All right, so let's take a look at question number six. So in this question, we're giving uh, we're given a data table, okay, where we're given two brands of food, dog food, that have a certain amount of nutrients in each brand, and we're told how much each brand costs. So we have brand X and we have brand Y. One costs twenty five dollars a bag, the other costs twenty dollars per bag. Now it says here, these are the minimum units of carbohydrate, fat, and protein um, are 12, 36, and 24 units um, respectively. So how many bags of each brand should be mixed in order to minimize the cost and what is that cost? Okay, so what we are have here is we are given some target values, okay, for carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, okay? So the carbohydrates we need to get are 12, we need 36 for the fats, and we need 24 for the proteins. Okay, so what that is telling us here is that we have, um, we have to buy a certain number of bags for each item. Okay, so if we buy so many bags of brand X, we, we would take the number of bags and multiply it by two, and then we'd buy so many bags of brand Y and multiply it by one. And when we add those up, that should, our target value here is going to be 12. Now it also says this is the minimum number of units that we're looking for. So that means we could actually have more than just the minimum. That means it's going to be at least that many units, if not bigger. Okay, so the way it lets, we're going to set this up is we're going to, we'll write down a couple of let statements here. We're going to say let... Um, let the um, number of bags um, of bag X be variable X. They just unfortunately chose the letter as the same as the variable. Okay, and then we're going to say let the number of bags of Y dog food brand be the letter Y. Okay, so now this is going to be the number of bags that we are going to produce. Okay, so the very first thing is that we have, let's write an equation to calculate how much carbohydrates we have. Okay, well, brand X is going to give us two units of carbohydrates. So that means that's two times X for the total number of carbohydrates from brand X. And then we add that to the number of bags of Y times one. Okay, because Y is the number of bags and we get one unit of carbohydrate from each bag. So that means we are just going to be essentially one times Y or just Y. Now, if it says it's the minimum, the minimum means that we can be at least 12 or if not bigger. Okay, so that the way we want to do that mathematically is we say it's greater than or equal to 12. Okay, that defines things as a minimum value of being 12. Okay, and then for the fat is the same thing. We're going to go 2 times x, because it's 2 units of fat per bag of x, plus 9 times y, because there's 9 units of fat per bag of y, and we have to have a minimum of at least 36. Okay. And then the minimum for the other one here is two units of protein with times X, the number of bags of brand X, plus three units times Y, and our minimum is going to be 25, 24 units of protein. So these produce the equations that we are going to be graphing at this point here. Okay, so 2X plus Y is greater than 12, 2X plus... 9y is greater than 36, and then 2x plus 3y is greater than 24. Now we have a cost equation that we need to figure out also. Okay, so the total cost to purchase the dog food, okay, we can give that the letter C, is equal to the number of bags of brand X times the cost per bag. So the bag is $25 to purchase X, and if we have brand X, and if we have X number of those bags, it's just 25 times X. Okay, and then we add that to the total cost of purchasing uh, brand Y, which is the number of bags of brand Y, which is the letter Y times 20. Okay, so that's our cost equation, and we want to minimize that. So we need to plot our constraint equations 
and figure out what kind of a shape we have. Where is the common area that overlaps? And then figure out um, um, what, what are the points that are common okay, in, in the overlap. And then we need to figure out the minimum value from those points. Okay, so the idea here is that we need to graph this. So these numbers here, looks like they should, we should be able to graph these fairly easily. Um, it is going to take a little bit of effort to rearrange these equations. So I'm going to just jump over to Desmos here. Okay, and we're going to plug those equations in. And then we're going to let the, the tool generate the graph for us. And, we'll, and from that, we will capture the points okay that are uh, are needed here okay so i'm going to just quickly pop out of this and we're going to go into the desmos tool here let it load up okay so i've got a blank screen here for this so we're going to plot our first equation which was 2x plus y and that is greater than or equal to 12. Okay, so there's our first line. Now we're not interested in it, in it going off the, the negative side. So anything below the y-axis we're going, we will ignore and anything into the, um, to the negative side on the x-axis we'll ignore. So we just have a couple of points here. We're just looking at the positive part of it. Okay, then we're gonna plot in here 2x plus 9y. And that is going to be greater than or equal to 36. So now we have our other line. You can see it's starting to take shape. Okay, and now we see where, where the two equations overlap each other. Okay, so they're overlapping. Um, the big part where they overlap is um, where we have a couple of points here that start to define this. And then let's plot our third equation, which is going to be 2x plus 3y. And that's going to be greater than 24. Okay, and now what we have here, I'm just going to zoom in here is, or let me just pull this back. Okay, we have, um, we want to look at where all these lines overlap completely. Okay, so there's nothing here really below around the origin where it overlaps. Okay, all the equations start to overlap from this point here, starting at this point here, 0, 12. Okay, and then sort of the other point where they all converge is 3, 6. Um, we can't choose this point here, 4.5 and 3, because um, that, doesn't, that only captures two of the equations overlapping. It doesn't include the green part, so we're going to skip that. But the next point where all of them intersect is at 9, 2. And then the last point here is at 18, 0. Okay, so we have to write those down. So... That's what the shape of that, of where the overlaps are. So let's go back to our notes here. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll do a little table, okay, of all the little vertex points where they were overlapping. So the first one that we marked was 0 and 12. Then it was 3 and 6. Then we skipped that one below because that wasn't part of what was completely overlapping. Then we had 9 and 2. And then our last point was 18 and 0. Okay, so that's our, our vertex points. Now what all we have to do is figure out what our cost is. Okay, so we know our cost equation was 25x plus 20y. Okay, so I can write that down again here, 25x plus 20y. So what would our costs be for each pair of coordinates here? So 0 and 12 is going to give us 25 times 0 plus 20 times 12, okay? So 25 times zero plus 20 times 12. So that is going to give us 240, okay? Because the zero goes away. The next one here is 25 times three plus 20 times six. So that's going to be 75 and 120, which is going to give us 195. And then 25 times 9 plus 20 times 2. Okay, and that is going to give us 265. And then 25 times 18 plus 20 times 0. And that is going to give us 450. Okay, so remember, we're looking to minimize our cost. So the minimum cost that meets all those nutrient requirements 
is when we have a combination of three bags of brand X and three bags or six bags of brand Y. Okay, so we have three bags brand X, six bags brand Y. Okay, and our cost is equal to $195. So that's our optimum amount of bags that we should purchase to produce our minimum cost, but yet meet those nutrient requirements of at least 12, 36, and 24. Okay, so a little bit more involved this question. Okay, and like you say, it helps to use this uh, website tool because it kind of gets you out of just plotting the equations. Because once you know, if you know how to do those already, you should be able to work through them. But this way, we will generate the math from those equations and then figure out what it's trying to tell us. Okay, so that's the way that I would go through with this problem.